Each year, more than 75,000 hospital patients, including patients on dialysis, become infected with central line-associated bloodstream infections. And as many as 25% of those infected patients die, according to a study conducted by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. When initiating dialysis with a fistula or graft, medical professionals must follow recommended infection prevention guidelines. Doing so can reduce the rate of central line-associated bloodstream infections, decrease hospital costs, and, most importantly, improve clinical care. Hand hygiene is the first vital step to initiating dialysis with a fistula or graft and is a primary factor in reducing infections in the dialysis center. Alcohol-based hand rub is the preferred method for routine hand hygiene. Apply the product to the palm of one hand. Make sure to cover all surfaces of your hands and fingers, then rub your hands together until they're dry. You must perform hand hygiene before touching a patient, before beginning a clean or sterile procedure, after being exposed to body fluid, after touching a patient, and after touching the patient's surroundings. You must also perform hand hygiene before you put on new clean gloves. After each interaction you have with a potentially contaminated surface, you should remove your gloves and perform hand hygiene. You are not required to wear gloves before assembling supplies at the patient cubicle, but you must perform hand hygiene to reduce the risk of contaminating the outside of the supply packages with microbes. Supplies needed include a clean barrier, antiseptic agent, clean gloves, and two sterile dialysis needles for cannulation of the arteriovenous or AV access, as well as two syringes filled with sterile saline. These supplies are typically placed on top of the clean barrier on the tray attached to the dialysis chair. Once your supplies are gathered, wash the skin over the AV access with soap and water or an antibacterial scrub. In some centers, the patient may perform this procedure on his or her own. You must verify if the patient has done this either by observing it or asking the patient if he or she has washed the skin. If the patient is unable or unwilling to do this task, you must complete this procedure before moving on to the next step. Next, inspect the AV access site for both infectious and non-infectious abnormalities. Be careful when you palpate the cannulation site to identify specific sites for insertion of the dialysis needles. If you're not wearing sterile gloves and you palpate over the area that was just cleaned, then you may contaminate what was previously considered a clean site. As a result, when the needle is inserted, bacteria can enter the bloodstream. Given this risk, please make sure that you follow sterile procedures carefully and repeat them as needed. Before inserting the cannulation needle, place a sterile or new clean barrier under the arm containing the AV access to create a local procedure area and reduce the risk of blood contamination of the dialysis chair if bleeding occurs during needle insertion. Next, scrub the skin over the pre-identified needle cannulation sites with antiseptic like chlorhexidine. Allow the antiseptic agent to dry. Because the initiation of dialysis poses a risk for blood contamination, you must wear personal protective gear, including gloves, eye protection, and a mask and gown. A mask or face shield may reduce the risk of contamination of the catheter or site from sneeze or cough droplets containing infectious material. Without contaminating the needle sites, insert the dialysis needles into the AV access. After the needle is successfully in place, tape it securely. Follow this task by performing the second needle cannulation. Tape the second needle securely in place. Once you connect the dialysis lines to the dialysis needles, dialysis is initiated. To ensure safety, refer to the access of AV fistula or graft for initiation of dialysis checklist to make sure that you always follow proper procedure. Every time their dialysis lines are opened and entered, patients on dialysis are at risk of developing bloodstream infections. 
For this reason, you must follow proper injection practices when accessing the port to administer medication to ensure safety. Medication preparation must occur in a clean area away from the dialysis station. Before preparing medication, carefully follow hand hygiene procedures. Clean your hands with an alcohol sanitizer. Then, wipe the medication vial's opening vigorously with an alcohol pledget before drawing the medication with a syringe. Once you've prepared the syringe, clearly label the syringe. Include the name of the medication, the dosage, the time and date the syringe was prepared, and your name. You must clearly indicate if the syringe contains high alert medications like heparin. You must properly disinfect the port prior to injection to prevent bacteria from passing into the blood when penetrated by the needle. To ensure the port is disinfected, first clean your hands and then put on clean gloves. Next, decontaminate the injection port with an antiseptic such as chlorhexidine, idafor, or 70% alcohol. Rub the port vigorously with friction for 10 to 15 seconds. Once the port has been decontaminated, inject the medication. Remove the needle and immediately discard it and the syringe in an infectious waste container. Finish the procedure by removing and discarding your gloves and performing proper hand hygiene. Because improper injection practices have resulted in transmission of hepatitis viruses in dialysis centers, please use these safe injection procedures to ensure patient safety.